Hello, everybody. My name is Maria Calista. I live at the International House and I'm studying commerce at the University of Melbourne, majoring in marketing and management. And I'm lucky enough to be the holder of a Wheelton scholarship, which was for a disadvantaged female student from Indonesia, specifically from Bali, uh, provided by Paul and Angela Wheelton. So they're here with me today. Hello. 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 <laughs> nice to be showing you around today. Um, and if you want to introduce yourselves and, yeah, just a little bit about yourselves. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Paul Wilton. So I'm actually an old commerce student from uh, Melbourne University a long, long time ago. Right, so uh, there's connection between what uh, the course that Maria is doing and uh, the course that I did. And uh, Angela? Well. Who is holding Bella, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> our, our fur baby. I, uh, basically, I had two different stages of education, which was great. The normal one where you go through, you know, VC, VC what is it called then? VC, yeah. Yeah, VCE or? VCE or whatever. Um, and then I stopped and worked. I worked for a Swiss company for a very long time, so travelled a lot and ran their business here in Australia and New Zealand. And then I decided I needed to study more. So I went back again and did my master's degree in business Amazing. management. So terrific thing to do is to educate yourself because you don't know what yeah. you don't know. But it's really, really an important statement because you think you do know and not until you get there, especially yeah. when you're taking on um, a particular type of uh, learning that is, you know, above what you've been used mm -hmm. to. But an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. I would never have been and or finished where I finished mm -hmm. without that education. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. important to me. Yeah. I'm very, yeah. uh, sorry, Paul, both of us are major advocates of uh, education. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so both of us have been very successful in our lives mm -hmm. uh, in, in business mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so giving back is an important part of that. Mm -hmm. But when looking at giving back, why were we successful? Well, it was really education, mm. okay? So in my case, uh, my parents were what they called 10-pound poms. They came to Australia with assistant passage and I was the youngest of four and uh, I was the only one who got a private school education and the only mm. one who went to university. And they borrowed the money to, oh, wow. to send that mm -hmm. and uh, I can remember my father taking me to dinner one night when I was 23 saying, I've just paid off uh, your, the school fees for oh, you. Oh, wow. So... That great value in Angela's case, it was uh, she did her education later to move forward. So that's when she did an MBA. Yeah, uh, with it. But it's that education that's that's uh, really uh, been the fundamental or the mm -hmm. pillar of us, and so we value it so much. We've had a long involvement with uh, Indonesia and projects over there, and one of the things that we saw very clearly was the effect of education on, on younger people. Mm -hmm. So in, in the poorer areas where it costs money to go to secondary, a lot of the kids, especially girls, mm -hmm. were um, they were working in the fields at 10. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we saw the effect of a, keeping them at secondary school but also providing scholarships to university and the effect that it had not just on them, on their family, mm -hmm. but also the whole village or, and community. So mm -hmm. that, that power of education is just so strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that is probably one of the best things we've done in philanthropy mm -hmm. was education, getting more and more young girls and or anyone, as, as a matter of fact, is to have them educated because, again, as I said before, you don't know what you don't know yeah. and you learn and you become... I know when I did it later on, as Paul said, I just couldn't get enough information, you know, mm -hmm. because you're older and you're uh, you're able to take more and and take it in more and um, and certainly make good use of what you're learning, mm -hmm. which helps you go the next step when yep. you start to go out into the corporate world or wherever it is you work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, education is a very empowering thing. I mm -hmm. always like to say knowledge is not power, it's potential power, and the next step is putting it to use. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's an important And, and our success, you know, it is not about IQ no. and how smart no. you are at all. It's actually all about how hard you work. Yeah. And the harder you work, uh, you know, the yeah. more successful you're going to be. Yeah. There's, a, there's an old saying, you know, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's very true. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, and you take uh, any of the courses that you'll be doing and things like mm -hmm. that, Getting through in the high marks is just, it's just 
they're checking whether you've actually gone and done the work yep, to do exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. And this education which gives you the building blocks to be able to make decision-making, mm -hmm. make, make uh, life choices, make uh, career choices mm -hmm. and all that, they're the fundamental building blocks that you're learning that you can then just step up to the next level. Yep, yes. And really important to have a mentor, especially yep. in the early phases, then you become a mentor mm -hmm. to somebody else. And the best thing you can do for anyone is to be able to help them on that journey. And mm -hmm. like, you can't do it for them, but you can certainly guide them. Like we've we've guided you to a certain degree. Yep. Um, and the way I was guided, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's that's one of the most <laughs> important things. It's the learnings are one thing, but mm -hmm. the actual going through the process, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough when you, when you go back to study or when you study. Mm -hmm. So, but it is the best, they're the best decisions I've ever made in mm -hmm. my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in ter and back to looking up to having a mentor, someone mm -hmm. to guide you, well, I look up to both of you a lot, mm -hmm. um, not just for, you know, everything you've done and your kindness but also just how hard you work and the advice you give me. Mm. It's always like really inspirational to talk to both of you and just to see how invested you are. And I know that you wake up at 4.30 and... But you have such a disciplined lifestyle and you're always striving um, to bring your best and always just putting in the the doing your best and putting in the most effort you can and Angela you always talk to me about what it was like working at a Swiss company where it wasn't I was the only female. yeah well you were the only female and that always just uh, you know it really touches my heart to hear that mm. because we're it's, it's really empowering mm. um and the yeah the one thing that helped you to do that was your education and Correct. that was almost that gave you the stepping stone and then the next thing you had to do was work hard for mm. all the things you accomplished so mm. yeah it's mm. it's been amazing to be able to actually meet you both in Melbourne because I know that a lot of people they have scholarship donors but they're kind of almost at a distance from each other and they might meet once or twice but to be able to actually come and speak to you both and get to know you as people it's mm. been it's been very mm. special for me. Mm. Yeah. Oh, nice. there, is, there is nothing nicer than to be able to take those coming on a journey behind you yeah. through help them, to help them through that journey yeah. because you don't know. You, not that it, we should do it for anyone, but it's yeah. about guiding people, you know, when they have questions or they're not sure or, you know, what should I do here? And, mm -hmm. and it just helps you to make those decisions when you've got people that have, have been through what you're going through now, like mm -hmm. Paul and I. Um, it's, it's a huge advantage mm -hmm. and, and you know that we'll always be here for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the both of you spend the most of your time on philanthropy, right? Now yep. we do, yep. yes. And, and you just, you're helping so many people in Bali as well and in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I know you had the School for Life buses. Um, Life, well, Education Life Education Australia, Australia. Yes, Australia. Mm -hmm. 30 yep. years in there, which is uh, drug and health education. So we've had a long uh, relationship with education there. Yep. Again, it's because it said we... We see it as a corner pillar for success. Mm, yeah. Uh, however, there's another quote that we always use too. It was, to be, it's up to me. And, you know, so it's you. it's got to be you who's mm -hmm. going to do this, mm -hmm. but you've got to have the passion to do it. But if we can help, mm -hmm. all right, along yeah. that way, that's that's how we see our role in it. And, yeah. uh, and especially, you know, our, our thing was for a disadvantaged person from Bali to mm -hmm. be able to do it that wouldn't normally get access no. to that. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, as I said, we've seen some great results mm. out of uh, yeah out of that uh, program. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's and of course giving people the tools that and the resources that they might always have access to. Mm. Um, and it's it had always been my dream to be able to go to university, but because of circumstances, I never really knew how that was a possibility. And then it became a possibility um, through your kindness. So. Um, of course, I can, will never stop saying thank you very much for providing me with that opportunity. It certainly helps that we're at, at absolutely um, huge advocates of education yep. for, young, for young people. And, yep. you know, too many leave school too early and then they just sort of get lost in the mix. Yep. And, but you've already got a pathway, which is fantastic. Yep. And you're following that pathway. So I'm very, very interested to see how the next part of your journey yep. goes. Yeah. I'm sure it'll go extremely well. <laughs> so... Tell me, Maria, <laughs> seeming that I went to uh, commerce here and uh, many years ago, as I said, 
uh, and I was a day student there and uh, I ended up doing it part time. So my experience at uni wasn't greatly getting involved in it and uh, and having a look at International House here and the facilities and how you all work so well together. What, what's your experience of coming here? Mm-hmm. Well, one thing that's been really um, lucky for me is I living at International House, which is a community, mm-hmm. and it's just a very nice, intimate community that I can come home every day from university, and I can have friends that I see all the time in the dining hall, and I can also sign up to a lot of the events here, and there's an abundance of them happening all the time. It's mm-hmm. so much fun, and it just... For example, uh, as my role on the student club, I'm the new student representative. So I'm welcoming in new students. I'm acting as a voice for them in our meetings. I'm getting (coughs) feedback from them to see what we can improve and how to make them feel more welcome and just planning some fun little events every now and then. And this is just very fortunate because it's very fortunate for me because I get to expand my experience as what being a student leader is like. I get to work alongside other student leaders and learn from them and just be interacting with everyone all the time. So I think living at a college has given me, provided me with the advantage of yeah being able to get involved in a community. Mm. Um, and Otherwise, there's also been jobs here which I've been able to get. So last year I was a marketing assistant and this mm-hmm. aligned really well with my degree because I'm so I'm doing marketing and management at University of Melbourne and to just be able to see um, how the marketing theory I was learning was being able to be applied in real life mm-hmm. was a great way to just learn and be able to understand and appreciate my course even more. Mm-hmm. And... I was able to, of course, develop my own skills in that industry. I was able to generate promotional content and think and use my critical thinking to assess what would be the best kind of content to provide, to put out. Um, And just always talking to students and welcoming students all the time and giving tours, which um, has been such a highlight of being at a college. And yeah, there's always volunteer opportunities here as well. So during Welcome Week, we get to welcome in a whole lot of new students. And again, that it's quite empowering because we get a lot of autonomy to plan the things how we want to do them. And so this is just a great way to develop our own skills and push us to kind of go out of our comfort zone and take the leadership role. And it's just it's really fulfilling at the end of the day to be able to do such things like that um and i'm just yeah i'm very grateful to be living at a college that allows me to do things like that and when i go out into the real world and apply for jobs i'll be more um skilled because of opportunities like this and yeah see what i like about that so what when i was there as a day student there, yeah it was all you come in from the suburbs into the university yeah. you do your course of thing go back and you'd have a part-time job and it was all work and all this Whereas you're learning how to give back already mm. by what you're doing here and you're volunteering <laughs> mm-hmm. and all that. And that's a great, you know, extra bonus that I see that you're getting out of, mm-hmm. you know, being at International House here. Yeah, yeah. And just to be able to, I mean, every day um, being in a community and I want to give back to the community as well. Um, that's such a bonus of being at International House. And yeah, very grateful. I think living at a college definitely has a lot of advantage mm. um, because you can go to university, but it's almost like it's this big, huge place and you're going to classes once a week and you you don't really see form as much of a bond with the people in your classes as you do with the people you well live oh, with yeah, sure. mm. and see every day. So it's very special to me. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And you can yeah. see it in your face. You're very always <laughs> yeah. smiling, you're always happy, even though you probably are, have a lot of work to do sometimes yeah. and you don't have time to do all that sort of thing. Yeah, well, it helps. We all get through it together here. Mm. I mean, we're all going through the same things. And I mean, I think you actually academically do better at colleges because you can, you're can. you just surrounded by people who want to learn and people who are learning and you get to talk to each other. And of course, that helps you understand and So that's also a major advantage of being here. So, Mm. well, the fact is, you've got people there that they might know something you don't exactly, and and you can share all the time, Mm -hmm. and they're not far away from you. Yeah, and that's uh, that's uh, that's a real yeah, um, yeah, special thing. Exactly. So, and when we're talking about a subject, it just it 
we're not stuck in a group think pattern we can you know we can but all give our own different opinions mm. and that just forms for better ideas in the end so better outcome yeah exactly mm. so that's pretty that's pretty amazing yeah. and, and what about the experience of being with people from a whole lot of different countries <clears throat> yeah because uh, you know I, I formed some close probably the only close relationships at uni here with some actually some malaysian people and mm-hmm. some uh, uh from uh, taiwan as well mm-hmm. and uh, and it, it was just terrific, mm-hmm. and I really learnt about different cultures because yep. at that stage I had not yep. even met anyone from a different culture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's been that's pushed me to be a lot. I think in the past year, when I look back, I couldn't believe some of the ways that I used to kind of almost like assume things. Mm-hmm. And one of the the sayings in the IH handbook is never make assumptions because when you talk to people they'll tell you stories and things that you would have never even thought of or yeah just never um, (coughs) known so I think it's for me I've learned not to make assumptions and I've learned to always I mean listen to people because everyone has something to share and Mm -hmm. you're and you're learning from each other all the time um, and you're becoming more of an open-minded person because of that. And so living at a college that houses so many different nationalities is just, yeah, it's that's been a really special part of the experience because I'm just learning and I'm growing every single day doing so when I'm sitting at dinner with someone who's telling me about their culture and the way they grew up and the things they had to do and experience every day. I'm just, yeah, I'm almost... I'm shocked well, sometimes. Well, you've got to keep a very open mind yep. and keep and and realize that you can only learn by talking to so many exactly. different people, yep. and understanding, you know, what happens in their life or what they're yep. doing to study and so on. And you can learn from that and actually adapt some of the things that you hear from other people yep. that you think will work for you. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also say at IH you'll never need Airbnb again because you just know so many people <laughs> from around the world. <laughs> very good. Yeah, that is funny. <laughs> so I mean, and I think. Um, will just these friendships will be forever mm. yeah so that's also very nice <laughs> very good